really look forward to jumping into this with you. Make sure that you dive all the way into it. You're gonna get a lot out of it. Soak it up. I look forward to this experience with you. Once you knew that you needed to come to Israel, mm -hmm. and it, it's quite a different experience to learn about Israel than it is to step foot on it, yes? Very true. And as you learn this story abstractly in the Bible, the history, uh, and it kind of lives in your mind a bit, uh, I could tell you just being here a few days, it's very, very different to actually be here and be standing on the land and looking at the stuff. Yes. And it, it, it has an entirely different um, uh, meaning experientially. Um, when you got here, you had some sort of anticipation, I'm sure. Of course. Did it turn out the way you anticipated, or has it been completely different? <laughs> you know that it didn't turn out the way I anticipated it. Um, it's interesting because I made several scouting trips, mm -hmm. uh, you know, between our first encounter and, and actually moving here. On my last scouting trip to Israel before we actually moved here, it was getting very close to the time of our, of our actual arrival. And uh, I came, you know, through the airport and something was different. And immediately my interactions, and you know, I wasn't trying to speak Hebrew, I didn't really know enough to, to do anything conversationally at the time, but my, my mentality, my attitude about myself was, well, this is now my country. I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a part of this. I've arrived. <laughs> uh, it was, I was slammed. I mean, I wound up standing on the street in Haifa, literally in tears, not knowing how to function. I was 45 years old. Um, uh, a college degreed person uh, had traveled around the United States speaking and being received by people and, and, and understood as, as part of this movement and so forth and so on and knowing how to function as an adult. And, and like, I just realized I am starting all over again. Yeah. I don't know bupkis, which <laughs> means beans in Yiddish. I don't know anything <laughs> about, how to, about how to live here. And so that you know, that was the beginning of what still occasionally brings me to tears, even 25 years later. But you know what? It's a healthy process. Yeah. Because uh, the scriptures say that, um, that the sacrifice of God is a broken heart and a contrite spirit he will not despise. Mm -hmm. There's something about being broken and not being able to function in your natural ability linguistically, culturally, uh, you know, conversationally, educationally, economically, that, that forces a dependence on God and a realization, I'm, I'm not gonna make it on my own. This is, this is not a solo flight. This is outright total dependence, and I'm only here by the grace of God, and if anything of value happens, it's, it's Him. And, you know, by His grace, we never gave up. I never thought, this is too tough, I'm gonna go back. I never thought, you know, I, I can't stand another day of this. Mm -hmm. There were desperate moments. There were broken moments. There were, there were, there were times of frustration, still are occasionally. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that's part of life. But I wanted so much to be a part of this nation. I wanted so much for uh, our people to understand that Yeshua is not only one of us, but he's the greatest one of us, and he's the one that we're all looking for. Do you know that the ultra-Orthodox movements around the world, but especially in Israel, uh, are, are intensely expecting and, and preaching that the Messiah will come? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the messianic expectation is getting higher and higher because the days are getting more and more desperate. Right. And, and the rabbis know that, that this is the end of days. And they know that the Messiah has to show up. What they don't know is that he already did show up and he suffered for our sins according to the prophets and that he's coming back triumphant. And, and so this is, this is what made it worthwhile. So every step of the way to, to, to learn the language, I'm still learning it. I mean, do you know what that means? Yeah. You know, as a 69-year-old man, having been at something for 25 years and, you know, and still, still hitting walls. <laughs> but you know what? God, it's, God is pleased, like, you know, if I can step out of my own humiliation and my own frustration, I know that this is pleasing to God, number one, because I just give it to him. Number two, I don't stop. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to stop ever learning Hebrew, and hopefully there will be some courses in heaven, you know, <laughs> that I can continue this thing. Um, the culture, 
the culture here is crazy. It's like, <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, people fly off at the, at the you know, the, at the drop of a hat, but then they'll hug you the next moment. Yeah. And um, it's like everybody, not everybody, many people take on, uh, you know, a sort of a defensive posture, you know, that the rest of the world is against them. Well, guess what? The rest of the world has been against us and for the most part still is against us, <laughs> but you don't have to be against me, I'm on your side, you know? <laughs> but but that's, that's what happens psychologically. Right. And so until it took me several years to begin to key in on this, oh, people are so, Meshuggah here, so 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 wacky, mm -hmm. because we have absorbed thousands of years of opposition, and and it and it creates this tension. Yeah. So so how does it feel if all the neighboring countries around you want to push you into the sea, right. and never see you again? That that has an effect under under the surface, you know. But but what a motivated people. I mean, what has been done in this country, in in less than seventy years is absolutely. I mean, it's off the chart. It's, it's unreal. And uh, this is part of what we celebrate. The other night, this is a, this is a good place to kind of bring this response uh, to, to a point. Uh, just uh, last week, we went to the Western Wall. Mm -hmm. The Western Wall is uh, one of the favorite, if not the favorite places for the army uh, to, uh, to lead the brand new soldiers in taking the oath of service where they, they're sworn in. Mm -hmm. they, they actually take an oath to be willing to die to defend this country. In that ceremony was my oldest and first grandchild. Wow. My, my 18 year old grandson who was born here in mm -hmm. this country. He took the oath to defend this country in front of the Western Wall, which was the retaining wall of the great temple of Herod's temple. 2,000 years ago, and and the sense of of history uniting, the sense of and and there were there were Israelis of every stripe and every shape and every dimension in that in that plaza next to the Western Wall. It's this big open area. If people haven't seen it, there were religious people, there were non-religious people, families, uh, all there to to honor these young men and to and to cheer them on and to thank them and to and to and to be a part of the country together. Mm. I'm telling you, it is worth it all. Every, every moment of brokenness, every moment of awkwardness, every moment of not understanding, why did you respond to me that way, you know? Oh. Or why can't you just answer me in a civil, you know, degree of, of courtesy, you know? Yeah. Or, you know, why is this thing valuable and that thing is not valuable, you know? And, and I won't go into all that because it's a little bit embarrassing for our country. But anyway, there, there are certain values that I have. Mm -hmm. I value the environment. That's, that's not always valued here, you know? I mean, that was, I, you know, you, I told you the story of, you know, living in the mountains and, you know, it's like every, every pitcher of water was sacred and so forth and so on. But, you know, this people has been through a lot and I need to be patient. And anyway, it's the love of Messiah. It's not the love of Eitan that's gonna get the job done. <laughs> it had to be quite an experience to say that I have grandkids born here. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, so to come here and I have to imagine you're staying here, right? This is Absolutely. where you're, you're living at your yeah, days. You, you couldn't move me. <laughs> and to, you now see grandchildren that are actually now charged with defending the country. This is an interesting thing culturally because there is, of course, the, the religious side, if you will. Mm -hmm. But all the people in Israel share this history, which goes back thousands of years live in the context of what you're surrounded with here. I mean, you know, not far from here, there's, there's some serious threats right. to the existence of Israel. Just over the northern border. Yeah, I mean, we're not far from that Hezbollah, right now. yeah. Yeah, the Hezbollah is right there. They're far more powerful now than they were in 2006 when they sent 4,000 rockets on us yeah. to this area. Right to here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were running for bomb shelters. And in Haifa, yeah, so you were in the The whole place. Haifa Bay area. Yeah. Wow. So, well, then, since you brought it up, <laughs> you came from the mountains of New Mexico, and now you got shells raining down you know, from Lebanon yeah. from a terrorist organization that's intent on destroying you. It's true. What was that like psychologically? Um, you know, it's, it's really a, an experience that, um, first of all, uh, the entire country unites. Mm. You know, because you're you're under attack for your existence, and um, 
People throw away their differences uh, uh, to a very, very great extent. We found ourselves supplying um, Orthodox food kitchens uh, in, in northern Israel uh, with, you know, with uh, food to distribute. And they knew that we were Messianic Jews. Yeah. So the barriers begin coming down, for mm -hmm. one thing. For another thing, you obviously uh, take, uh, take stock. Why am I here? Um, is this worth, uh, you know, what, what if a bomb goes off because uh, bombs were shaking our, our neighborhood, literally, mm -hmm. and if a bomb had fallen, bombs, uh, one man died when he went back to his apartment to get a blanket for his child wow. because he left the bomb shelter. We have a bomb shelter just like that in, in a park uh, next to our apartment house. And, um, and I thought about it. I thought, okay, well, a rocket could land uh, in, the, in, you know, in the yard here outside of our door. And um, one of the safe places to stand was wherever there are, is a series of cement stairs, mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're not exposed to the outside. You know, but I, but I opened the door and I looked at the outside and I said, so, you know, if at this moment a rocket fell and those rockets were packed, uh, you know, with all kinds of nuts, bolts, glass, whatever. Mm -hmm. So when it hit the ground, all of that spread out like that, mm -hmm. just psh, immediately. So anything in the path, uh, 360 degree uh, radius from, from the point of that bomb, you know, was going to be shredded. And that could have been me. Mm -hmm. Um, so you, you begin to, you begin to evaluate, you say, well, what if, what if I would die? You know, uh, has this been worth it? Is, is this worth dying for? Is this worth giving my life for? And, um, of course we, we felt, yes, it is, but then you take precautions. So we were moving, uh, a lot of the children, uh, and, and women to take care of them, uh, to the South because that, that particular war was here in the North and, you know, and, and maintaining what we could, um, in those kinds of times, uh, I found myself identifying with other portions of humanity mm -hmm. through history. I'd never personally been under that kind of attack. Um, I, didn't, I didn't go through any battles. I, I, I didn't serve in an army. And, and I didn't know the reality of being shot at or, or being in a, in a field of battle. Um, but there's, there's something about the reality of it that caused me to identify and, and it was just something that, I don't know, it, it touched me in a way, the suffering of mankind, the reality in general of, of war and of man killing man. Um, but then of course also it, it heightened my, my faith and my realization that what God said in the scriptures uh, about, about this land, this place being opposed and our presence here being opposed, um, it, it, it built my faith and increased my desire to be here. That's it for this particular interview. Thanks for joining me. Really excited to take this ongoing journey with you as we keep bringing more content. If you haven't already, you really should subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of phenomenal content coming down the road into the future that you'll want to know about. Leave a comment down here. I think people would love to hear from you and then you can hear from them too. If you liked it, go ahead and give a like. It only takes half a second and share this with people that you care about. The world needs more light in it right now. So thanks for being with me. Hope to connect with you again soon. Thank you.